from Cheryl Fosnott, and I'm under the covering of 420 Fire, and welcome to Table Talk. So, last week, if you were with us, we, I talked about uh, being more than a conqueror, and that Daddy, our Heavenly Father, didn't raise any victims. And so, if you missed it, go back and watch it, and uh, share these videos. And also, you can catch me on YouTube under Cheryl Fosnott, and that's F-A-U-S-N-A-C-H-T. So, tonight we're going to talk about holy boldness. You know, it is, um, the times are getting dark, and if we don't speak up, we get ran over, literally ran over. You know, I feel like that that's what happened during the 60s and se early 70s when, uh, when Roe versus Wade went into effect and when uh, prayer was taken out of schools that we weren't bold. We didn't stand up for what was right and we got ran over, literally bowled over. And so it's time for us as the church to rise up and be bold. And so I looked at the definition of bold and it says that it's showing an ability to take risks confident and courageous, having a strong or vivid appearance, striking, bright, strong, eye-catching, conspicuous, or distinct. So how do we get to be bold? Well, I was looking, I was searching scriptures, and, and I think the best way to be bold is besides you have to know who you are in Christ. And if you have been following me for any length of time, you will know that uh, over the last, uh, probably in the last two, three, four months, I did a whole series on who we are in Christ and how to get to know who you are in Christ. And so we have to know who we are in Christ to have that boldness. But even so, even if we know who we are, in Ephesians 6, 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong or be bold in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in, wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, Take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So we have to put on our full armor and then we can stand. We can stand boldly. It says praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. So being watchful and uh, with all perseverance for all the saints, for all the saints. You know, if you see a saint getting attacked, Run to the rescue. There was a lady here in town, or just in a little town right near here, the other day, um, who spoke out against the new Hocus Pocus movie. And uh, she was interviewed on TV, and I'm telling you, she was attacked by vicious people. And uh, a few people stood up for her. But we need, when someone, when we see a brother or sister being attacked like that, we need to run to their defense. Uh, Proverbs 28.1 says, The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. We are righteous. We should be bold as a lion. We need to let our roar be heard in these last days. In Exodus 14.8 the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out of Egypt with boldness. And there was like two million people, uh, two million Israelites that left Egypt. And the whole, the entire Egyptian army was chasing after them. But they were bold and they went out anyway. And they went out not knowing where they were going to go or how they were going to get there. They were going to have to cross a sea, and they didn't know how they were going to do that. But by golly, they did it. They were not afraid. They were bold, and they did it. Psalms 138.3 says, In the day when I cried out to you, cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. The Lord, when we cry out for boldness, the Lord will strengthen us. 
So if you are feeling fearful or afraid or intimidated, I'm telling you, intimidation is one of the biggest tactics of the enemy nowadays besides fear. And fear is bombarding us through the media. But so is intimidation. That's like all these people who uh, were uh, bombarding my friend on Facebook uh, the other day. They were uh, intimidating and mean and bullying. And we have to stand, stand, take a stand, stand for what's right. She was standing up for something that was right and trying to help people understand the, the, the evil is coming at you from all sides. And she was trying to protect her community and her friends by just saying this. And she was brutalized because of it. So, uh, in Acts 4.13, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they mar the people marveled. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. You know, I'm not highly educated, and I'm not highly trained in the ways of the Bible. But I spend time with Jesus. And because of that, I can stand, I can sit here boldly before you tonight and proclaim the gospel the way the Lord has shown me. In Acts 4.29, Now the Lord looked on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word so that's a prayer for tonight is lord grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word lord help us to speak your word boldly boldly and not be afraid and not be intimidated or not be not think that they're gonna think we're nutty or we're gonna we're fruitcakes or we're holy rollers or whatever and lord help us to be bold and not be intimidated by that stuff People are dying and going to hell, and if we don't speak up, their blood's going to be on our hands. Acts 4.31 says, And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. We have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's imperative that we be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's, that is like... Uh, the difference in a screwdriver and a Makita power drill is what the Holy Spirit in filling is. So we want to be able to do the job and do it effectively and quickly in Jesus' name. Philippians 1.20 says, According to my earnest expectations and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. So whatever we do, if we're living if, or if we're dying, let's just pray that we will be bold and not be ashamed and not be ashamed to share the gospel. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We cannot go boldly to the throne if we've got sin in our life, if we're feeling guilty or convicted of something. We have to be pure in heart to come boldly before the throne of God. And all that is is just, Lord, this is me. I'm sorry for, for what I've done, for the things I've done, the things I've said, the things I've thought, the people I've hurt. Lord, forgive me. I don't want anything to stand between you and I. I want to be able to come boldly to that throne. Hebrews 10, 19 says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. And we can go in because the blood of Jesus is what covers our sins. That's why we can go boldly to the throne of grace. Hebrews 13, 6 says, So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? John 4, uh, 1 John 4, 17 says, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Boldness in the day of judgment. So that when, when the Lord comes to judge, we can stand boldly knowing that we have lived a righteous life. So I want to talk about Daniel 
or not in a book in the book of Daniel in chapter three. Uh, this is a story about bold men, three bold men. So King Nebuchadnezzar, he made this gold image, and he commanded everyone that when they heard these horns and flutes and harps and everything, that they should bow down and worship this image, and that whoever didn't worship the image, they would be thrown immediately into a fiery furnace. So the time came, and some of the town folks told the king that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wouldn't bow down. So the so King Nebuchadnezzar brought them in, and sure enough, they said, no, we're not going to bow down. So the king was furious, and he had the fiery furnace cranked up seven times hotter than normal. And the three men were bound up in their clothes and tossed into the furnace. It was so hot that it killed the guys who threw them in. And then the king looked in there, and there were four men walking around in the fire. The fire had no power over them, not on their bodies or on their clothes. They didn't even smell like smoke. And the king blessed God and said, no God can deliver like their God. You know, those guys were bold. They were facing death, and they would not deny the Lord. And they boldly stood up to the king and said, no, we're not going to bow down. We're not going to do that. David was bold. King David, he ran towards the giant. Rahab was bold. She harbored spies to save her family. Noah was bold. He built an ark for like over 120 years, and he was being made fun of every single day while he was building that ark. Moses was bold. He helped about 2 million Israelites escape the bondage of Israel. Peter was bold. He walked on water. Paul was bold. He kept on preaching even when he was beaten and put into prison. You know, if you look around, you're going to see a lot of bold people, people who take bold stands about the Word of God, about what they're doing, and about truth, and about right, the right thing to do. You know, it was a bold act in overturning Roe versus Wade. And we have to November is coming up, uh, election month, and, and it is imperative that we vote the Bible, that we vote for life, that we vote for uh, freedom of speech, that we vote for, um, bib for virtuous, virtuous people and virtuous actions and virtuous, um, uh, take a virtuous stand on the issues. So here are a few uh, aspects of a bold person. They take action. Bold people don't just sit around and talk about it. Bold people do something. They put feet to their words. Bold people know who they are in Christ. They do what's right. They speak out against wrong. They own their actions and take responsibility for the mistakes. Their mistakes don't define them. You know, like um, uh, Dave Ramsey, he is, I don't know if you know who he is, but he's a financial guru, but he has, he has filed bankruptcy before, and he's learned from that. His mistakes did not define him. Peter cut off the ear of a high priest servant, but he didn't let that define him. Bold people confront their fears. Like David, he ran towards the giant. I don't know if he was fearful or not, but he was a little guy, and that was a great big guy. He knew who he was in, in the Lord. He had killed bears and, and lions, but he had never killed a giant. But he, he confronted that anyway. Bold people learn and study. They study um, the enemy. They study the, the Lord, and they learn the ways of the Lord and learn how to do battle effectively. Bold people aren't afraid to say no. Actually, it's one of my favorite words. It's very easy for me to say no. Uh, you know, we have very limited time. And as a steward of 24 hours a day that the Lord gives me, I have to prioritize that my hours and my time. And it's easy for me to say no. 
bold people are strategic. They strategize. They, uh, you know, as for, for me, I, I try to follow that road. You know, if I choose this, how is it going to turn out? What's going to happen if I go this way? And if I go this way, how is that going to look? What's it going to... Uh, What's it going to entail? How much, how much is it going to cost? How much is it going to cost me personally or professionally to go either way? We Bold people strategize, and they aren't afraid to act. You know, we, as, a, as a bold person, we cannot be afraid to approach somebody in Walmart and pray for them. We cannot be afraid to uh, speak to that ch cashier at... H-E-B and say, hey, can I pray for you? We cannot be afraid to act. Bold people have vision. Uh, the, the word says that we, without a vision, we perish. And so we have to have a vision. We have to have clear, clear goals of what we, what, clear goals for our future and for, to, for the day and, and uh, for our jobs, for our families and for our ministries, you know, and we're all in ministry. If you are a child of God, you are in ministry. Uh, bold people are honest. You know, and I have found that most bold people are very transparent. Uh, bold people have clear values. Uh, I will do this, I will not do that. Most bold people are very black and white. There are no shades of gray. There are no shades of gray in the Bible. It's sin or it's not. You're for me or you're against me. It's life or death. And so choose this day. No man can serve two masters. And so it's black or white. And we have to have clear values as well. Bold people have high moral standards. No, I'm not going to watch that. No, I'm not going to go there. No, I'm not going to drink that. You know, bold people, the, the higher you want to go with the Lord, the more you're going to have to, of the world, you're going to have to leave behind. And um, if you're comfortable right where you are, then kudos to you. But I want the summit. I want to hit the summit with the Lord. And I, I can't do it hanging on to a lot of the, to the world. I can't. I have to let go. We have to let go of the world. It's going to perish anyway. Bold people can admit when they're wrong, you know, and I have done it a zillion times. Uh, I do it often, often, and uh, it keeps us humble too, but we have to admit when we're wrong. You know, Jesus was bold. He died for you and me that we might have abundant life, and he paid the price for that abundant life. He, in the word says, be bold and courageous, fear not. In the Bible it says, for, fear not like 365 times, one for every single day. And we have nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. The enemy is like a roaring lion. He's not a roaring lion. He's like one. And if God is for us, who can be against us? And we have every spiritual weapon to fight effectively the fight that he's placed before us. So I challenge you tonight to rise above your fears. Rise above your peers and do what's right and be bold and courageous for the Lord. I say, and I say this all the time, and you've, if you've been listening to me, you know, I say, YOLO, you only live once. Live it loud and live it for the Lord. So go be bold and be courageous and do it joyfully as unto the Lord. And I, I just, I just want to pray this over you again. Lord, I pray that you grant to your servants that with all boldness, we may be able to speak your word. So um, thank you all for joining me tonight. Share this video and... Um, Lord willing, I will see you next week right here. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.